Hey guys, welcome to the Veteran Outdoorsman channel. And we finally got to the point where you're actually going to get to see me handle some guns. We're going to be talking about action types for shotguns. Now, we're going to talk about the three most common action types. Being the auto loader, the pump, and the brake action. There are others out there. There are some lever actions out there. There are some bolt actions out there, etc. And there's two types, really three types of brake actions. We're going to discuss that a little bit. But let's start with the most common here in the United States. And that would be the pump or the trombone or a slide action. And somebody did ask that I move the camera back so I could see the full gun. I've got a small house and I have trouble doing that. And for this purpose, you really only need to know what a pump action is, so we're gonna talk about that. I will get all but the end of the barrel in there though. So first, for safety, clear it. This is a pump action, pretty obvious. You pull the trigger, the pump slides. And that's how you work the next shell. With a plug, it'll have two in the magazine, one in the chamber. Depending on where you're at, what you're hunting, what you're doing with it, you can take the plug out. Some of them will have a hole all the way up to seven, and you can even get magazine extensions, etc. That's the pump. The most common action, generally affordable, um, takes a lot of abuse, things like that. That's one option you Then, it's already open. You have the classic auto loader. Now this, this is a Browning Auto 5. This is a, the most beautiful gun I own. Um, and this thing's almost 100 years old. But there's lots of auto loaders out there. They don't all look like this, but pretty simple. You have your magazine tube, you load your shells in the bottom. Every time you pull the trigger, the gun goes off until it's empty. That's an auto loader. Boom, boom, boom. Quick second and third shots. The little pump, some pretty quick shots as well. A little more expensive, tend to be a little heavier. We'll go into that here in a second. And then let's look at, put this one up, and brake actions. These are the cheapest and most expensive actions. This is a single shot break action. It's pretty simple, just breaks open. They're available in side-by-side -side double barrels and over-under double barrels as well. Those guns get considerably more expensive. The cheap option is a little single shot like this. Pretty self-explanatory. Put the shell in, close the action, pull the hammer back, pull the trigger, it goes off, hit the lever, open it up, take the shell out, or let the shell fall out, whatever, reload, do it again. Those are the three main action types. So, what are they most suitable for? Well, we mentioned budget is part of it. Maybe you can only spend a couple hundred bucks as your, as your max. And you want a shotgun to do a little bit of hunting. Or you want a shotgun just to keep in your house for self-defense. You don't necessarily want a tactical gun. So you just want something that will work. You want to do some rabbit hunting with your buddies, things like that. You're just really strapped for cash an old used single shot like this. Now that one has been fitted with choke tubes, but you could get a fixed choke modified or whatever. If they're light, they do recoil more. But with an old single shot like this, I have taken a myriad of games, squirrels, rabbits. I've hunted deer, not taken one. Um, crows, doves, ducks, etc. They're lightweight, they're easy to carry, 
They're inexpensive. They're solid. They're reliable. And that may be the choice for you. You've got a little bit more money. You want a lightweight gun that you can carry a ways. You're going to be pheasant hunting, grouse hunting, walking a lot, maybe shooting eight or ten shells in a day. A lightweight double barrel break action may be the gun for you. When it gets into the break actions, the double barrels tend to be a little bit lighter streamlined, made for bird hunters, etc. And they're really good for that purpose. The side-by-side, -side, sorry. But with the over-unders, they can be really good for Tra for skeet, for trap doubles, things like that. These single shots aren't that great for clay birds because you can only fire one shot at a time. Not going to pick up a lot of doubles if you have to open your gun and load it. But you could certainly use it for trap. The old BT-99s and 100s were great trap guns and they're single shot break actions. H&R even made some trap guns over the years as did Winchester, etc. Some single shot break gun, um, trap guns. But again, think about what you're going to do with it. If you're mostly going to shoot clay birds and things like that, a break action over under may be a really good choice. But how about this? I'm going to do a little bit of everything. I'd like to keep it for self defense if possible. I'm going to do some small game hunting some rabbit hunting, maybe some squirrel hunting. I'm going to do a little bit of bird hunting with my buddy. He's got a dog. <coughs> Rosie, be quiet. We shoot some pen rays, quail. We go up north and shoot some pheasants, things like that. Then, I go to my buddy's duck lease a couple of times a year. I turkey hunt. I wouldn't mind getting into deer hunting, but I don't have a gun I can deer hunt with yet. I shoot a few rounds of trap, a few rounds of skeet over the years, blah, blah, blah. I want a gun that I can do a little bit of everything with. Remember, a mad jack of all trades is a master of none, but there are some guns that work really well for the myriad of everything, but in the extremes may not be the best, A plain old pump shotgun will handle any shell you stick in it as long as it matches the chamber. Light loads, heavy loads, it doesn't care. It's not going to hang up on you because you put too light of a load in it, like an auto loader might. The boogeyman out there, Rosie? The dog's wandering around. But it might. They're available with short barrels for home defense. They're available, available with short barrels for turkey hunting and things like that. Longer barrels for waterfowl, trap, skeet, etc. If you want a go anywhere, do anything gun, I'd recommend the pump in either 12 or 20 gauge. This one is a 20, but for your one do-all, do-anything gun, a 12 would be my recommendation. Unless you have some physical limitations, then a 20 will be just fine. This is my light, small game gun. I picked it up at 20 gauge because I wanted something to recoil a little less, was a little lighter to carry, etc. Rosie, be quiet, please. Here. But, I picked, that, I picked this up for an all-around gun, 26 or 28-inch barrel. This one's 26. I'm really beginning to like the 26s, guys. Um, I was always a 28-inch fan, but I'm really beginning to like the 26s, especially with the Invector Plus choke, so it's a little bigger diameter barrel. And with the vent ribs, they swing just as good as the old 28s. Um, I'm really beginning to like a 26. So the 26 inch barrel would be my choice now. A pump shotgun. 
I'd pick a synthetic stock. With this gun, it's not overly long. You could use it for home defense. You can buy a shorter barrel for it as well for not very much money. But you can certainly use it for home defense. May not be ideal, but remember I said jack of all trades but master no. Three inch shells for turkeys and waterfowl and whatnot. Two and three quarter inch shells for smaller, lighter game, target shooting, clay birds, etc. Certainly shoot buckshot, put an improved cylinder choke in it, shoot slugs, put a rifle choke in it, shoot slugs. Get an auxiliary rifled barrel, shoot slugs with rifle-like accuracy. You can add this stuff as it goes on. Some of the pump shotguns out there, you can even get muzzle loader barrels at one time, and you still find them available from time to time, so that's something to think about. Shoot any shell that you put in it. Some of them will even shoot with the mini shells, guys. They'll all shoot with single shot at least. Rabbits, squirrels, doves, ducks, turkeys, deer, clay birds, trap, skeet, sporting clays. You can do it all with this gun. Put a slug barrel on it, deer hunt with it. You can do a little bit of everything with this gun. And the great thing is, that a decent pump shotgun will generally put you back something under $500. Somewhere between three and $500 will get you a 26 inch barrel or 28 inch barrel pump shotgun with screw in choke tubes, a synthetic stock like this, and allow you to do anything you want to do. If you specifically want it for home defense and nothing else, find a short barrel bush. If you specifically want it for clay birds, but you're on a budget, find the 28 inch barrel version. But if you want to do a little bit of everything, get you one of these 26 inch pumps and it'd be hard to go wrong. Now let's get in to the auto motors. Talked about the brake actions. Talk about the pumps. The pump being probably the most economical, most practical choice. Let's talk about the auto motors. Now, if you're out beating brush for bunnies, pheasants, and things like that, maybe a Browning Auto 5 with a Wallet stock and fancy blue isn't for you, but this is just an example. I also have a Beretta 390 with a synthetic stock and a matte finish that is a better choice. But honestly, I love this gun so much it has become my all around gun. A lot of older automatics auto loaders will be two and three quarter inch only guns like this one. If you find a Remington 1100, Typically, they're going to be two and three quarter inch. If you find a three inch gun, you found a great gun, but they many times won't handle the lighter shells, so keep that in mind. If you're a waterfowl hunter or a turkey hunter, probably not a big deal. If you want to hunt rabbits and squirrels and doves and things like that, probably not the best gun for you. Get an 1187 in that case. Same with the three inch shell. Auto fives, it wasn't easy to make them work with the lighter shells. So keep those things in mind. Auto loaders are going to be a little more finicky as a general rule. The better auto loaders, Beretta 390s and even later model Berettas, things like that, the new Benelli's and whatnot, handle light loads and heavy loads pretty well. This gun, if you change the friction rings will handle the lightest loads and the heaviest loads that you can throw in it. But you have to make some changes in between. Um, I believe Bakayle made a gun that actually had a switch change from light loads to heavy loads. But there's lots of guns out there that are self-regulating that will shoot light and, load, light and heavy loads just as well. So that's something to think about. An auto loader tends to have a little less recoil especially with a gas operated gun but one of the reasons they have less recoil is because they tend to be a little bit heavier 
This gun's over eight pounds, guys, with a 26 inch barrel. Also, this is a true recoil um, operating gun, where at the recoil of the gun, the barrel comes in, pushes the bolt back. The bolt locks in place, the barrel goes forward, the shell flies out. Then the action closes. Because of that, when set up correctly, very light shooting. I have a Beretta 390 that is a gas operated gun. Very light shooting. The Remington 1100s, Remington 1400s, very light shooting. Very light recoiling. The solid breech pumps. The only thing that regulates the recoil on those is how heavy the gun is. So you get a six and a half inch, 12, a six and a half pound 12 gauge, it's going to beat you. You get an eight pound 12 gauge, it's not going to be so bad. That's really all you can do is add weight. This, the brake actions the same way. The over unders tend to be heavier. The double barrels and single sh the side by sides and single shots tend to be lighter. The lighter gun, solid breech, going to be heavier in recoil. But if you're carrying it a lot, shooting it a little bit, not so bad. If you're shooting it a lot, a heavier gun may be for you. But the advantage of the auto motors. Quick second and third shots. They're great for waterfowlers, great for bird hunters, things like that. High volume shooting. Um, with a gas operated gun, great for, because of the recoil mitigation, great for claybirds, things like that. Personally, I think this gun's great for claybirds. When set up properly, it recoils very, very little. Um, very light. One of the softest shooting automatics I've ever fired. And I know there's guys going to say, Browning Auto Fives just beat the snot out of you. They do. But it's generally because either the recoil spring's worn out or the friction rings aren't set up correctly or the magazine tube is way too wet. There's too much oil on it. When it's set up correctly, it's one of the softest shooting guns out there. And I will personally, if you're in town, take you out and let you shoot this with heavy loads when I set it up right. And you're going to believe me after that. I would let my 12-year-old shoot this gun. I've shot this gun as a young kid. Um, I shot a lot worse guns than this as a young kid. Kids suck up a lot of recoil, believe it or not. I know my, my dad shot this probably when he was 12. This was my grandpa's gun. It's not bad, guys. Plus, it's heavy. There's no way that a eight, eight and a half pound shotgun with two and three quarter inch shells is going to beat you that bad. A lot of them had hard butt plates. That was part of it. But most of the time, the recoil springs and stuff were just worn out. And that's why these guns got bad doesn't matter. Fast shooting, less recoil on certain types of auto orders. Magazine extensions for a lot of them, for spring goose hunting, for self-defense, things like that. But an action type really comes down to a lot of personal preference. Let me put this thing away. And let's just sit down and talk. So you figured out what you like your gun for, what you want your gun for. I've kind of told you what different things work really well. You can get an auto loader with a short barrel for home defense or for turkey hunting or whatever. You can get them all the way to like 34 inch barrels. Same with pumps and, and whatnot. You can really set up any of them for anything. The single shot break action is just going to be your budget. Do a little bit of everything, but nothing really well done. But hey, we've all been there, right? We've got a New England Firearms partner in there, 12 gauge, 28 inch, fixed modified choke that I shot everything with. I couldn't tell you how many shells, but it's thousands. 
I could fill the bed of multiple pickup trucks with the game I shot with that gun. To this day, if I'm kicking brush for rabbits, and I know that I'm going to walk miles and miles and miles in the day, that's probably going to be my choice. Because it's light, and it's really quick to come up. I've quail hunted and stuff with it as well. If it had an improved cylinder choke, it'd be even better for that. But I'll give you an idea of what I pick for different things. And I'll give you an idea based on what you're going to do the most. If I'm going to use, keep a shotgun solely for self-defense, I've got an 870 in there with, a, with a, a short barrel around 19 or 20 inches. Just a, over the minimum of 18. Pump action, obviously it's an 870. Cylinder bore, short barrel. That's what I'm going to keep solely for self-defense. If I'm going to do just bunny stomping, things like that, stomping around, shooting rabbits and whatnot, one of my single shot, my really light single shots in either 12 or 20 gauge are going to be what I pick. Because I carry it a long ways, I'm not going to shoot it a lot. They come up really fast. Really fast. If I'm going to go bumming around with a buddy, maybe we're going to do some rabbit hunting, maybe we're going to do some squirrel hunting, maybe we're going to do some clay birds, things like that. I'm just going over, visit three or four days, maybe do a handful of things with a buddy. Probably going to take one of my pumps or my Auto 5 or my Beretta. Um, I would say that my pumps and automatics are equally set up for a little bit of everything. Okay. My Beretta has a 28 inch barrel. My Browning has a 26. My Winchester pump, or yeah, my Winchester pump here has a 26. 20 gauge and two 12 gauges. Great, great guns to do a little bit of everything. If I'm solely going to be shoot clay birds, I'm going to go shoot um. Five stand or sporting clays. I'm going to shoot a couple rounds of trap. A couple rounds of skeet. If I'm going to shoot skeet or sporting clays, probably going to take that Browning Auto 5. 26 inch barrel, lighter recoiling, etc. I'm going to shoot trap. Probably going to take my longer barrel, my 28 inch barrel, Beretta. I'm going to go waterfowl hunting or dove, or dove hunting. For doves, I may take that pump 20 gauge. For waterfowl, I'm either going to take my Beretta or my Browning water loaders. But if I had a pump 12 gauge, I would certainly take it as well. If I'm going to turkey hunt, that Pump would be just fine. That's a 20 gauge, loaded with three inch shells, put a super full choke in it. Be just fine. I did turkey hunt with it last year a couple of times. Lightweight gun, carried a long ways. I liked it. I can even put a sling on that gun. I really liked that gun. I finished the season with that browning, but what I did find is it's a little bit heavy. My Beretta would be better suited for that. You have to make your decisions. I'm telling you what I use different guns, action types, things for. Okay? You have to make the decision. Deer hunting. If I'm going to be shooting buckshot, I would pick, because of recoil, I would pick either my Beretta or my Browning. Probably my Beretta because it's three inch chamber. The Browning is two and three quarter, but the two and three quarter inch gun's going to kick a little bit less. So that's something to think about. If I'm shooting Foster slugs, any of my guns are going to work, but I would prefer to probably shoot that Beretta or the Browning. 
I'm going to shoot two and three quarter inch because three inch slugs are brutal. Put an improved cylinder choke in the gun. It'll be just fine. Or even a rifle choke. And it's got a 26 inch barrel, so it's a little shorter. It's a fairly heavy gun. I'm not going to be shooting it a lot. And I'm not going to be carrying a lot, though. Or my Beretta that has a extra slug barrel. And it's got a scope on it. So there's a lot of things to consider when you want to pick a shotgun. Action types, things like that. For the budget-minded guys, the single shot break actions are at the bottom of the go anywhere, do anything, but they will do a little bit of everything. The next step up would be the pump. And don't get me wrong, you don't ever have to go beyond the pump. The pump will work just fine for everything you ever want to do. But it's not as fast for follow-up shots like trap doubles, ski doubles, things like that. Sporting clays and whatnot. But it'll work just fine. It works fine for hunting and things like that. If you want a little more refinement, a little faster follow-up shots, things like that, an autoloader or a double barrel will suit you really well. Most of us are going to want a gun that does a little bit of everything. So for me, a pump or an auto loader with a 26 inch barrel, screw in choke tubes. I would say 12 gauge, but a 20 gauge will serve you just fine. Start with your full modified and improved cylinder. Get you a slug barrel later on. Get you some different chokes later on, and you've eventually got a gun that will do everything and do it pretty well. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the shotgun series, how to pick a shotgun. We started off with gauges and with the chokes and with the action types, and now we've talked about the uses and what to pick and, and blah, blah, blah. We went to uses, start with action, went to action types. I've had a lot of fun with this series. I hope you enjoy that. We could do it with deer rifles, 22s, all sorts of things, and maybe I'll start doing some things like that. Put some suggestions in the comments. Let me know what you think. I know there were some suggestions. Again, stand a little further away from the camera. I just don't have enough room. There may be times I'm able to do that. If I'm really showcasing the gun, I'll try that. But uh, for the purpose of these videos, you're just going to have to live with it for now. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think. We will see you in the next video, guys.